Hey, this is Mr. Warden. This is a video key for Do Now 15.2, the last Do Now of 2020 for our algebra class. So we're going to consider these two points, and I'm going to make a graph that will help us. So here's our XY graph, and uh, our points are 12, 3. So I'm going to plot this here. That's going to be 12, 3, okay, and 16, negative 17. So 16, and then I'm going to go down to about there. I'm going to call that the other point. So this is 12, 3. Okay. And this one is 16, negative 17. So what's our vertical change from 12, 3 to 16, negative 17? Well, our vertical change is down. <clears throat> so our vertical change, we can just say, and I'll actually do this. So we're going from 3 to negative 17. Uh, so we should get a difference. And what we're saying in the difference is um, how far apart are negative 17 and 3 in the negative 17 direction. So we'd say negative 17 minus 3, and that equals negative 20. So the change, the vertical change is negative 20. Okay, at least in that direction. That should be a 20. Okay, now let's look at the horizontal change. <clears throat> That's the next question. In the next question, we need to consider the horizontal change from this point to this point, and that's from 12, uh, from 12 to 16. Okay, so we're going horizontally, and that's in a positive direction. So that's going to, you can eyeball it that that is plus four. But if you weren't sure, you could make sure to calculate it by just saying 16 minus 12, and that's going to equal four. Now, what's the <clears throat> fraction that we're going to get? We're going to have negative 20 over four, which is going to equal negative five. So <clears throat> if you've got negative five, congratulations, you just calculated the slope for those two points. A line going through 12, 3, and 16, negative 17. Now, Jimbo, <coughs> remember Jimbo? Jimbo needs your help again. He was working out the slope, and he ended up coming up with negative 1 fifth. Well, negative 1 fifth is the reciprocal of negative 5. So you can pretty quickly tell that he got the change of x of x over the change of y. And he just flipped the slope. He got change of input divided by change of output, which would be like saying your speed was in hours per mile. Um, so uh, we don't typically do that. It's not necessarily mathematically illegitimate, but it's something we don't uh, do for slope. It is not the definition of slope. Slope is going to be output change over input change. Now, he's trying to come up with an equation for a line. And after your help, he worked out that the equation has this part. It could be y equals negative 5x. However, he also worked out that negative 5 times an x value of 12, which is one of our points, one of our x values, doesn't equal 3. It equals negative 60. So how am I going to get, how am I going to, what am I going to do to get from negative 60 up to 3? Well, we could add 63. Let's test that out for the other one. Negative 5 times 16 equals negative 80, but the actual output is negative 17. So would negative 17 plus 63 get me to 80? Yes, it does. So this is the line equation. Now, if you have gotten to level 5b, um, the point slope form, you might have noticed that we can rearrange so we know that slope equals change of y, that's that difference of y's, over change of x, right? <clears throat> so we can rearrange this equation by multiplying both sides by change of x. Okay, multiply that times change of x, and I'll multiply this times change of x. And change of x over here goes away, and I'm left with change of y 
equals slope times change of x. Now, why the heck would we do all these shenanigans? Well, sometimes you get some really cool stuff just by playing around with an equation. Now, change of y could be any y value on the line minus a known y value. We'll call that y1. And slope is the slope. And then change of x could be any x value. I'm just going to put it as a variable. We don't know what x value is, minus a known x value. And this equation should be true for that particular slope. So we can rewrite this right here. We can also pick either one of these points, and we can say y minus the y value on one of the points. So let's pick 3 equals negative 5 times x minus the x value that we know for that point. Okay, so we could do that. Or we could have picked the other point, 16, negative 17. We say y minus negative 17, which is the same as y plus 17. I'll get back to that. Equals negative 5 times x minus the known x value. <clears throat> and then I'll clean that up. That becomes y plus 17. Now, it turns out these three equations graph the exact same line. And if you don't believe me, let's go to a Desmos and demonstrate it. So I'm going to open up Desmos. <clears throat> and what this does is this is actually called the point-slope form. The point-slope form that I've just shown you here uh, is named after the fact that it uses a slope and a point. So 12, 3, or 16, negative 17, and then it uses a slope. So first, let's plot those two points. They were 12, 3, and 16, negative 17. And let's zoom out so we can see them. Okay. Now, we already demonstrated that y equals negative 5x plus 63 should do it. That's cool. But now let's try the other version that I had. I had y minus 3, because that's the y value for 12, 3, equals negative 5. And this is just rearranging the slope equation. Equals x, negative 3 times x minus 12. And that worked too. And so this gives us a tool that we can use to graph a line through any two points. There's the slope. There's the x and y values for a point. Well, let's see if it worked for the other point. And it should, because we got the slope from these two points. So we'll say y minus negative 17 is plus 17 equals negative 5 times x minus the x value for that point, which is 16. And look, it works as well. And in fact, if I were to create, <clears throat> I were to create a slope, um, we'll say M, okay, I'm going to actually make it this way, Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1, and I'm going to make sliders for all of those, and I'm going to create a point that is going to be X1, comma, hang on, X1, comma, Y1. Okay, there's a point. There it is right there. Now, what we want is a line. Uh, we're going to try and see if this line always stays on that point. So I'm going to move that point around. I'm changing the slope. I'll change the X. And it will always end up <clears throat> at that spot. Now I'm even going to do this. I'm going to make a second point. I'm going to say X1 plus 1, comma, and the, and the y value is going to be m plus, um, m plus, let's see if I can make it this way, m plus y1. Yep, that works. 
<clears throat> so now I've got two points that are on that line. All right, I hope that has been helpful to you um, as an introduction to the point slope form, which allows you to come up with a line that goes through two points. We'll talk more about that in class.